Well, first of all, Congressman, I want to thank you for joining us in this uh, podcast. Uh, you know, the term champion, I think, is probably overused here in Washington. But it, when it comes to protecting Social Security, improving Social Security, you really are the embodiment of the term champion. So I want to thank you for all this years that you have put into doing just that, protecting and improving the program. Uh, Congressman Larson uh, chaired the House Ways and Means Social Security Subcommittee from 2019 until 2023 and is now the ranking member of that subcommittee. And his landmark legislation, Social Security 2100 Act, and that's what I want to talk to you about, Great. Uh, is really, uh, as far as I can recall, one of the most comprehensive pieces of Social Security legislation in recent history. Uh, Congressman Larson has represented the 1st Congressional District in Connecticut since 1999, and we're looking for a lot more years of you representing that district and being on the Ways and Means Committee. Well, thank you, Max, and uh, thank you so much for all of your work and effort, what the National Committee has done over the years. And you know, my predecessor, of course, who's a dear friend of yours, Barbara Kennelly, right. served in your capacity and also served in my capacity That's as right. congressman from this district. We have but that in common. Exactly. <laughs> and there's nothing more important, I think, to the American people than Social Security. Uh, as I like to remind everybody on the stump, the number one anti-poverty program for seniors, the number one anti-poverty program for children as well. Yeah. And what other program do we know of? I know people like to refer to it as a tax, but it's an insurance policy. What other program do you know that you get a pension, a disability, a spousal, dependent coverage, and a death benefit from? Yeah. None. And that's why the American people respect and admire and like it. It's only up to Congress to take the action that it needs to do. And hopefully we're going to make some headway in this session as well. Well, I hope so. People do need to be reminded that this program, Social Security, has lifted more people out of poverty than all other, other uh, federal programs combined. combined. So uh, let's talk a little bit about Social Security 2100. Sure. Right? Where do things stand now? What are the prospects? Well, uh, we're in the process forward? right now. We'll probably be introducing the, the bill late March or early uh, April. And the reason is because there's been a turnover in Congress. The Republicans are now in charge, but also we have an influx of new members, both on the Ways and Means Committee uh, and a number of freshman members, both on the Democratic and Republican side. So we're in the process of reaching out to put dear colleague letters together. Already have been overwhelmed with the response of members saying, you're introducing the bill again, right? Yes, we are. And, uh, you know, we're looking, you know, we've called it Social Security 2100. And we're thinking about saying Social Security 2100, common sense. Uh, because I think that's where we are in the country with people after the last election cycle, especially when President Obama went out on the stump and so did um, President Biden talking about Social Security. And as you know, President Biden has called it a sacred trust, which it is because Absolutely. people understand that. So we want to make sure that this common sense proposal that, as you point out, has lifted so many people. Without Social Security, 40 percent of our seniors would be living in poverty. Yeah. I know you know these facts, but I think it's important that the public hears this information. And then who are these people? They aren't Democrats or Republicans or unaffiliates. They're your brothers, your sisters, your mother, your father the people you go to church with, your co-workers, et cetera. That's how important this program is. 66 million people are on it and believe and trust me, it will be there in the future, provided Congress does what it needs to do. Well, one of the, uh, one of the things Congress needs to do is adjust the cap on wages subject to the payroll tax. Exactly. As you know, it changes a little bit every year. Uh, this year, 2023, it's $161,000. After that, no more payroll tax. Right. I ask, often ask why. And 
and I'm sure you know, at the end of February, millionaires stop paying right. Social Security tax. So what, what do you envision as changes that are feasible in that cap? Sure. And we, uh, we believe, uh, I agree with you, I don't know why from the time I got on the committee, that we have a cap. But the fact of the matter is it's there. Well, also, uh, President Biden has been very clear uh, because the Republicans refer to this as a tax, he said there will be no taxes above 400000 So he's calling for lifting the cap on people making over $400,000. I'll bet not many of your viewers out there are making over 400000 In fact, I think there's only six-tenths of 1% of the American people who do. So lifting the cap is not creating a hardship on them. They get a benefit for it, but what it does do is allow us to enhance the program, something that hasn't been done in 52 years now. So we need to enhance the program. They need to be paid for, and that's a logical place to go. As you know, Bernie Sanders and Elizabeth Warren have uh, introduced a bill that lifts the cap starting at $250,000. Right. So I think there's general consensus that's building towards a very common sense solution. Everybody ought to pay. The person making 400,000 shouldn't pay less than a person who's paying full bore making 30 or 50,000 or 75,000 dollars a year. And so that's why we think this makes common sense and it perpetuates and keeps the program going and allows us to enhance benefits which are badly needed. Absolutely. Well, it's it, I couldn't agree with you more how it's so important to get the message out that there is this cap. I, you know, right. As you know, I've done hundreds of town hall meetings with you. Probably thousands in now. In Connecticut, don't, don't date me there. <laughs> uh, but, and all over the country. And a lot of people, when I start talking about the, the FICA uh, cap the, uh, on wages, they have no idea because they've never made that much money. Exactly. And they assume everybody pays. Everybody pays the same and thing. So I do think it's time that the Congress revisit that, that whole issue. So, uh, you know, when, when the President at the State of the Union, uh, and it was a brilliant move, asked uh, those to, that are for seniors, for Social Security, stand up, well, who's not going to stand up? You exactly. can see the ad sitting on your hands when you're, and, uh, as opposed to supporting seniors and Social Security. But I'm just wondering, those people who indicated their for Social Security, for not cutting it, for seniors. You think we ought to let our guard down? What Peter Finley Dunn has said is, trust everyone, but cut the cards. And in this case, uh, the American public not only deserve, deserves the cards to be cut, but they need a reshuffle and a new deal. No pun intended, but uh, the kind of new deal that Roosevelt came forward with that uh, uh, produced Social Security to begin with, but enhanced it because of its important role that it plays economically and what it plays in people's individual lives. And I really believe our colleagues on the other side, too, haven't been put to the test to this because I don't think when they are subject to all the data and all the information and when they look at this as the perspective of not being socialism, but the program that saves their mother, their father, their brothers, their sisters. For so many Americans, including 66 million current Social Security workers, we need to enhance this program and need to do it now.